Hi guys, guten Morgen. I'm Sakis Terzis. I'm a web developer from Greece. And this is my first live event after almost two years, after the pandemic. I'm really happy for that. Today we're going to speak about uh, search and filtering in general and in Joomla more particularly. So I'm starting with the basic question. You know, search and filtering is about offering a limited amount of choices which fit better to our users, no? So I will start with the basic questions, some basic questions. Do you think that the more the choices, the better? What do you think? <laughs> For example, this, is, this are some shelves from a supermarket, fully packed with pasta sauces. And do you think that this kind of layout offers the best outcome for the business? <laughs> no answer. These are some results from an experiment conducted by two researchers from Columbia and Stanford universities. What they did was to install a tasting booth, a table within a grocery store, and different days they showcased different number of items of vases with jams on their tables. So one day they had 24 vases of jams, the other day they had six days of jams, six, six days of jams. They did that, that several times, and what they found out was that when they offered 24 tastes of jams, the purchase rate was around 3%. And when they offered 30, uh, six tastes of jams, the purchase rate was about 30%. So as you can think, there is some correlation between the number of the options we offer and the conversion we get. It turns out that when we offer so little choices, we are demotivated to make a decision. And when we offer so many, this causes some time of frustration because of our mind's capacity constraints, our time constraints, all that stuff. So our goal is to achieve the maximum effectiveness. There is a point where the maximum effectiveness is achieved. Uh, in their experiment found out that six items are the optimal amount of number, but you know this varies depending on the items, on the layout, on the way we present them and all that stuff. These are some data from Salesforce. And what it shows is that just 9% of the users globally use the on-site search engine, but this 9% generates about 22% of their revenue. So as you can understand, this 9% has much better conversion rate than the other part who is not using the search engine. Okay, this is obvious, no? And, but do you think that on-site search is enough? Well, this was asked to American users and they replied that 79 of the US adults agree that it's important to be able to filter the content and the search results by relevant attributes. So, as you can understand, search is not enough, okay? Now in Joomla we have the smart search, which is quite sophisticated, okay. It has some drawbacks, it's not perfect, but it's quite sophisticated solution. But what about <coughs> filtering? How can we filter the content with our tags, categories, custom fields, which now are very powerful, no? So I'm going to demonstrate you how to create set up a filtering system in Joomla based on JFilters, which is one of the extensions I developed. And here we go. So I skip this one. This is a site named Laser France. It's about films and books. There are several categories for each one. There are several custom fields. If we go here, okay. A 
as we can see we use several custom fields we use tags as well so the question is how to use them all to filter our content I'm going to install the pro version So guys, if you have any question, you have to say anything, feel free, okay? Once I install it, I go to the JFilters component. Now, you may get some alert messages at the top. Just press the call to action button and everything will be resolved. No, it's okay. I didn't sleep very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excuse me? Uh, yeah, it's cre it creates one more table okay. which connects the uh, smart search results with JFilters results. It's an intermediate table. Okay, so now we have our filters here. As you can see, we have a filter for the categories, for all our custom fields, and the tags. I'm going to publish them all for the moment. And in the next step, I'm going to create a filtering module. I uh, the, the filters. Oh, the filter, the filter. Yeah, because w once they generate it, they are checked out, you know. Okay. But if you open them, you can save them normally. You have no problem. Okay. <coughs> so I'm going to the modules. Here is my filters module. So what we need here is a menu item where the results will be, will be loaded, right? This menu item will be of type JFilters results. I'm gonna name it Leisure. So a tip here is that we do not want this menu item to be directly accessible by our users. So better hide it in the front end. Something else that you can do is to set up the way the results are displayed. Here there are some settings which are the same with the, the ones used by the smart sets because our component use the same layout as the smart sets. So you can define how the results will be shown the exact same way. Okay, we want the image. We don't want the date. And no, the URL. And we're ready to go. Close it, add the message. Let's, yeah, set some. I enable the Ajax, the Ajax. And here we go. So we get all our filters, as you can see. Okay. And now we can do some <coughs> setup of them. I'm 
We're going to set their display type. We're going to put the tags at the top. Let's set the tabs to be multi. Select buttons. Where to watch to be checkboxes. The language, let's say radio buttons and so on. So if we go here, we can see our filters. It's all settings we did. Now, if I visit the category, you will see that the filters we get are relevant to that category. So as you can see here, when I select documentaries, I get filters relevant to documentaries. When I select books, I'm getting filters relevant to the books. Okay. So what happens, the same happens if I select a category from any other place. Okay. But what happens if I unpublish? the category filter. So as you see here, we get or all filters. The category variable is ignored now, right? What we can do that in that case is to go to the category filter and set it to listening state. What a listening state does is that the filter is not displayed but is still listening to incoming requests. So the filter is still getting get account but by the other filters. And even if I select it from another module, you can see that it's the same as the category filter is published. Okay? That means that you can select the category from any other place. The same happens with the tags, by the way. You can use the tags modules to select the tag and the filters will, will be relevant to your tags, right? So you can do this. And the same happens with the smart sets. If I do some sets here. Just a little question, just to be sure to understand. Actually, when a user goes on the menu, yeah. it calls a regular Joomla block view, for example. Yeah. With the module on the side, uh, on the sidebar, with the filters. But as soon as somebody clicks on the filters, then technically it's not the block view anymore. It switches to the smart search. Yeah, view. the that, smart search layout. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we have the J filters component, which uses the same layout as the smart search. Yeah. The reason we did this because we would like to have similar view between the search and the filters, which can be combined. No. Yeah. Sure. Uh, actually, maybe this looks like a drawback. Okay, a disadvantage. But if you think it, you can have one layout for your smart search results, for your category pages, for your tags, for your custom fields results, and all those also combined. So if you think it, you get one layout for everything almost, okay? For many types of pages. So what I was saying was, is that you can use a smart search and filter the results
Okay. Now, what if we do not want to have such a sophisticated filter, but just use the tags or the categories? I'm sure that many of you don't use many filters in your sites, small sites especially, but possibly you are using the tags, right? So what can we do here? is to create a new module or several modules with just one filter. You can use also a new menu item, for example, only for your tags, if you don't want to use the Joomla's menu item for the tags, you can use your own menu item here and you are done with the tags, okay? So I'm selecting the tags here. And on all pages. So if I go here, I forgot something. Here are my tags. Okay. And now you may ask me, why should you I use your tags? when Joomla has a tags module, no? No? I think that most of us don't want to use third parties. Uh, well, look what you get. You get a module which works with Ajax, okay? Can be combined with your categories, as you can see. When you select a category, you are getting tags relevant to that category if you want to have that feature. You have the books do not have tags. That's why I don't get any. Uh, you have multiple ways to display them from buttons to multi-select uh, lists to check boxes to whatever you like. So I think there are some advantages you may think of it. And you can do something similar with the categories. For example, we may want to display subcategories <coughs> when we are in a parent category, no? Through a module. What we can do here is to create a copy of our categories. Let's name it movies. Publish it. So here I'm going to select the parent category so that I get the subcategories of that one. Okay. And now I'm going to create a new module. Where I'm going to display them. You can create a new menu item here as well. If you like to get a page for those, for the main category of the subcategories. So I'm going to name it Movies. Do you 
use Ajax, set it on all pages, not on all pages. I, we want that only for our movie pages. So, if I go to my films, you can see the movies here, subcategories. So again, you can use Ajax and combine it with the smart search if you have a lot of subcategories, okay? Now, to go even farther, you may not want to use a filtering module at all. But I'm pretty sure that most of you use those keywords from your categories, your tags, your custom fields within your text, right? No? For example, the name of your actors in your movies, the name of the director, the name of the release date, no? What about having them as links that return results from within your content. You get it? Let's unpublish all the filtering modules. Yeah, no module, no game. And go to our editor. Let's open one of our articles. Yeah, I did it here. Let's erase it. For example, we want to mention the language of that film. Okay. So we write language Spanish. And since this is a custom field and a filter, I'm going, I can create a filtering link that returns results based on that keyword, right? And let's say, and release date, or I can insert it directly. So, I select our date from our filters. And now, let's go to that article. So, as we can see, we have those two links here. And if I click Spanish, I'm getting all the Spanish movies. If I, I click 2018, I get all the movies for 2018. So you are not forced to use a filtering module, but possibly you will use those keywords in your text. Does, hey. does this work with JCE editor as well? Yeah. Any editor that shows these buttons. These are uh, Joomla plugins for the editors. So any editors that shows this it's, uh, okay, I can be yeah, used. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Okay, all right, yeah. It's the buttons you have to load. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, 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 yeah. The hyperlink, just uh, just below the uh, below the editor. Scroll down. Yeah, toggle editor. Simple links. Oh yeah. Okay. So actually, you could also make a replacement in the database to say uh, I don't know some name of actor and re yeah. replace it. I mean, you do it once. You see. The yeah, code. because the URL, as you can see, is quite transparent. Yeah, yeah. is the alias of the filter and the value. So in case you have uh, values with uh, special characters and stuff, you better encode them first, okay? Yeah, yeah. HTML encode them. Otherwise you get gibberish. 
Okay, some other settings I would like to show you in the filters. Let's publish our first filter, our first module, and here it is. Let's unpublish this one and publish our categories. So you may have many filters, okay, and you don't want, we want all of them to be expanded, okay? You can select the most significant for you and set them to be expanded and the rest to be collapsed, okay? So I can set the state of the filters here. So as you can see the gear is now collapsed, okay? But I can toggle it. Once I toggle it, it keeps the state. Okay. Something else that you can do is to search within the values of the filters. Okay. In case you have long lists, like here, for example, you can search within the lists. And you have this for all the display types for the moment and the drop down. Something else that you can do is to set a scroll bar if you have long lists again. So list search is for this yeah. search bar where you type. Yeah. Search is within the lists of yeah, the filters. Okay. You can set a scroll bar if you like. Okay. So, these are pretty much. I want to say some things about SEO. A usual objections, the objection you hear is about duplicate pages. Your extension may create duplicate pages with the category pages of Joomla and all that stuff. So, what we do in that case. is let's go to the SEO tag a tab here uh, the, mod, the the component can detect identical pages for example when I select category here okay if I go to our page source As you can see, there is a canonical tag that points to your Joomla category. Okay, so actually this tells the search engines to index this page instead. Are you okay? Yes. Uh, does it uh, find uh, the categories from the menu items? Yeah. Or from the category table? From the menu items. Okay. So if you have a, a link that is not Ceph URL. It, was, it will not take into account, okay? So this is based on the menu items. But this is configurable. You can disable if you like. For example, if you don't want to use the Joomla's category pages, you can disable this setting, okay? We have some other settings here about the URL format. Uh, it can be path or query, the max path levels, which is about the nesting in the categories, the updated page title. As you can see, when I select a filter here, the page title is updated accordingly, right? Uh, the URLs, as you can see, are clear human readable URLs. We invested a lot on that. And uh, the module is around uh, six kilobytes in the front end, minified and dezipped. So it's quite light. 
questions. <laughs> Feel free to say anything. We are only open to any criticism or whatever you like to say. Uh, does your extension work uh, well with uh, UT Pro? With? UT Pro. Pro. Yeah, we have a plugin uh, with which you can customize the results through UTheme Pro, through drag and drop and all the stuff there are there. Okay? Anything? I just realized now, one good thing now, for example, you have filters. If I click on the article, could I read it and I go back? Well, because the URL <coughs> contains all the filters, yeah. the people come back to their search, to, to, to their filters, to what they have selected. Like on some websites, sometimes the filters are made you know, with some native JavaScript. Yeah. Okay, you click on one film. Ah. You see, you come back. Oh, then you have to refill. You mean that the URL is updated? Hmm? You mean that the URL is updated when you select a filter, right? No, no, I'm just saying here, the, the URL contains all yeah. the filters people have yeah. selected. So even if they go and see one article, they come back, they come back to their selection. Yes. They don't lose their selection. And you can share it as well. Serve. You can share it as well, this one. So I have seen several times in the Joomla forums, you have to go there and press this and then press this and then press this in the filters. So in that case, you just share the URL and you get the results directly. You can also share the filtered URL to whoever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Like it. that's, that's yeah, the yeah. thing. Yeah. Because it's not filtered to JavaScript and it's cool. And the URL is readable by a human. It's explicit. It's not yeah, like yeah. Uh, some kind of query yeah. or... Guys, speak, op speak openly. Yeah. I'm really keen to hear you. But and you whatever, know, it, it needs to become a great extension from my side. During this session, I've... I've rediscovered features. I mean, I've used it heavily on one website, mm. this extension. And actually, there are so many features that I had forgotten some of the features, like linking inside the editor and everything. So I'm happy I attended because yes. there are so many features. Um, the website where I use it now is a big European survey with, I don't know, 200 questions and 26 countries answering those hundreds of questions okay. and what they wanted was to be able to say hey i want to compare the answers of germany belgium and, and luxembourg about about this question and that question so this is a perfect match because the filtering is very easy without this Great. there would be no solution but another use case now that i see the presentation I you can do a use case with your site if you like <laughs> <laughs> yeah we can do that but I have maybe a, an even nicer use case about a film, uh, a film um, site. A film site, but it's um, um, a big event with many. I don't call that uh, a festival, a film festival. And let me show you something else. And so there is there is a date for each for each event. Is it possible to say, oh, when people come, it's a whole month, so. Is it possible that when people arrive on the program that they don't see the films that were shown in the past, yesterday, day before yesterday? Okay. Yeah, they to lose make it. it automatic. Yeah. Uh, that they, they only see the future. It's a custom field, date, uh, date of show. Uh, ah, I have some questions. Since you are not making questions to me, mm -hmm. I'll make the questions. Make or do the, the questions, Brian? What's the correct phrase? Brian, it's, it's Brian, no? Ah, you look like Brian. <laughs> you are similar. So, some of the candidate features uh, we're I considering. Was, I wanted to ask if you have range filters. Okay, so. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, our development phase is, is about, is driven by the feedback we receive. So if if a few people ask a feature, this will be done. That's why I'm asking your feedback right now. Um, I have a, a website for coaches. 
four coaches, coaches, yeah. coach people. Yeah. And there are 18 coaches. I use U Team Pro. Yeah. And U Team Pro has a feature that you can also add a location of each coach in, in the database. Okay. So they wanted to have a radio search. So um, I created a filter myself with a plugin. Yeah. To uh, to use uh, U Team's uh, uh, database. Okay. Location. Yeah. Puts it in on a table with a cat, with a, I, I, I view the article and uh, those. Yeah, those I that see. I can do radio search. Is it possible uh, with your component or with some extension to do the same? Uh, I have to check how the locations are saved. Uh, yeah. If these are custom fields, it's very easy. I, I'm not sure of the database structure it uses, so I cannot answer this. They store it in just one field, so you cannot use. You have to have another table for it. For the yeah. Field. Maybe with a plugin that creates one more table that separates the values. So can you define which table you search? This is completely configurable. Uh, all the filters are generated by XML files. So you can technically, yeah. we haven't published those informations yet. Uh, yes, because we have to keep something for ourselves. If, if we publish everything, you know. Uh, with XMLs, you can define exactly which table with be, will be searched, which table give the values, which tables give the uh, the title, whatever you like. So this is completely uh, quite easy to be done. Yeah, but I have to check it. Okay, maybe if the values are in for the format you are saying, with comma separated values, uh, need some type of uh, storing, different storing, you know. Yeah. So guys, what about these features? Opa, again. What do you think? What? Which one would you vote? There's two things that I wanted to ask if they are implemented or if they plan to be implemented. Uh, I have two websites where I use uh, um, heavy sets of filterings and I used uh, Mega filter from Joomlarge. Yeah, no. I don't know. You know it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. It's pretty similar from uh, the functional uh, point of view, but the f I don't like the views of this component very much. I like your views better. So. What do you mean by by views? The views of the, the re results. Ah, they, okay. Uh, not uh, you cannot override them. Uh, they. It's not a blog view, it's not a smart chat view, it's ah, okay. their own view. They yeah, have their yeah, own view. Yeah. to learn yeah, yeah. how does it how, work, how, their how, view. how you can, yeah. yeah. If, okay. If they don't fit your layout or your, it's very hard to customize uh, those views. And I think it's easier with your uh, component. Yeah. The, ah, there is also a free version which you can download. I use the pro version here, uh, which has quite a few more features, but the free version is also functional. So you are free to download it. Costs nothing. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to mention if you like any of these features on, or any other, would you like to see? I'm, I'm not sure what you meant with range filters. Because uh, coming back to my question, for the film festival or any event like a Juma Day, if you want that the program page only shows the coming sessions, not the session of the past, based yeah. on the custom field with a date and time. Yeah. Maybe uh, no date until uh, the yeah. Or yeah. Or this one. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, in, in Joomla there are the date custom fields and the integer custom fields. If you know them, mm -hmm. these types. Okay. So when you use the integer custom fields, for example, to set a price for a product or whatever you like for a ticket, in your case maybe. You can use a range for those numbers. Can be a slider or two inputs. Okay, from two. You get it? Yeah. So this may be more appropriate for these types of custom fields. Yeah. yeah. And for the date, is the two calendars. So what I want is that people come on the program with Juma Day and they don't see Benjamin's session because Benjamin's session is finished. I, I have a I, I have a very smooth voice that <laughs> relaxes the people. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs. <laughs>
Hai să dog! What is? Hai să pag! Horrible dog! Principal dog! Ah, he can come here to be recorded in the video. Okay, anything else? Uh, what about the sorting rules? This is maybe something that yes. is yes. pretty missed, you know? The ability to sort the results by custom field values, for example, by the rating yeah. or by an integer custom field, for, for, by the price, for example. Okay? What do you think of this? Yes, I would like to have it. <laughs> yeah. But a question here is, uh, should be generic uh, uh, sorting rules for all the results or should we define different sorting rules for different set of results? For example, in our case, we have movies and documentaries. In your sites, maybe you have wines and uh, beers, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, these different result sets should have different Sorting rules, sorting parameters, or something universal. Different. It depends on the, si the size of the sites. Yeah. You know, when it's about sites with uh, 200, 500 items, okay, I think the same types of sorting can be used. But when you have much bigger sites with different type of content, we may need different sorting rules as well. So guys, this is all I think we come in our time as well. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. I hope you like it. <laughs>